look like. Okay, so three plus four, I think we all can handle that pretty well. Three. Okay, I want you to pay attention here. Like, I'm not asking you to put a three and then a plus mark and then a four. Okay, we're gonna represent addition. Like that plus sign just represents a real world thing. Okay, so that plus sign, three plus four, just represents having three and then adding four to it, right? Agreed? Take three, put four next to it, that's three plus four. And we should wind up getting seven, because we know what three plus four is in uh, you know, numbers. When we add them together, she gets seven. There's three, and there's a plus four. So you should start to see that addition looks like just putting things next to each other, right? That they exist in the same space, is they're adding to each other, all right? So I should tell you something about multiplication, that it must not just be that. And just using symbols like times doesn't make it multiple. Uh, let's look at x plus 1. Here is x. Let's add another one to it. Okay? x squared. We talked about this uh, when we first introduced algebra tiles. This side is x. This side is x. So this is x times x. This is how we re represent multiplication with algebra tiles by rectangles. Okay, we'll look at that um, more in a minute. There's an x squared. And here's three. Three tiles. x squared plus three. They just exist in the same space. That's addition. Okay. Um, x squared. There's an x squared. Here's four. Okay, we'll bring the four over. So there's been a little bit of uh, confusion about what does 2x look like. It does not look like this. You know, we got two next to an x. What's this? What is this right here? x plus 2. Just like this is x plus 1, this is just x plus 2. So this is x squared plus x plus 6. That's all this is. Okay. Now we will talk about it more. and, and um, There is a way that we can take 2 and x and multiply them and see what that comes out to be. But pretty simply, just like 7 is 3 plus 4, or it's 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. When we add up all of those ones, and we wind up getting seven of, of numbers, seven of, of, of constants. Okay. So if, if that's true, then 2x is just an x plus another x, just two x's. Okay. x plus x is 2x, and x plus x looks like this, just x and another x right next to it. So there's 2x. Okay. So I want you to, to get used to this, and if we go the other way, let's do that. Let's go the other way. I'm going to throw some things up on the screen. And I want you to tell me, <coughs> write it down with symbols and x squareds and twos and fives and whatever it takes. OK? You understand? All right, so here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay this out for you. I'm going to bring down one of these, one of those, one of this, one of those, one of those. One of those. That one there, that one, that one there, there, okay. and just so there's no confusion, I'm gonna get rid of all of these. Okay. So you write down what it is that I have, as, as neatly and as concisely as possible. Okay. Concisely means short.
So first, uh, we'll do with shapes and stuff what we do with symbols and stuff. And that is to collect like terms. These are the same as each other. Put those over there. These are the same as each other. Let's just kind of put these here. These are kind of the same. So we put them together, right? You just watch me collect like terms. So maybe that phrase makes a little more sense now that you've seen that. So we have x squared and then x squared and then x squared. Is that x to the sixth? No. So what does x to the sixth mean? I extend itself six times. Well, what is this? This is x squared plus x squared plus x squared. Right? So if you wrote that out, x squared plus x squared plus x squared, that would be six x's, right? There's no denying that. There's six x's involved, but they're not being multiplied together. Right? So it's not x to the sixth. It's uh, three of these x squareds plus three of these x's plus the number four. Right. So it's important that when you look at these, you understand what it represents. This represents 3x squared plus 3x plus 4. And if I put up some other numbers up there, you just count up the x squared. So there's that many of those. If there was 7 of these, that would be 7x. If there's 12 of these, that would be the number 12. OK? Right. So next, let me give you an overview of what we're going to be doing. So we've got these algebra tiles because we're going to do something with them um, that does tend to be tricky for most people. Okay? So I want it to be less tricky because we can see it happening. We can see what it looks like, and then we can translate that to symbols. So we can see it in a picture, basically, and then we can write it down in symbols. And that thing that we're going to do is multiplication. Basic multiplication, we've got down, right? 2 times 3, 5 times 7, we can do that. Right? Agreed? Right. Well, then we're also going to do something like 5 times x plus 3. Well, that's something you've done before, right? So it's nothing new, but we're going to see it with these algebra tiles. Then we're going to do something with the algebra tiles, something like this, x plus 2 times x plus 7. So we're going to see what that looks like and why it comes out the way that it does. So we're going to be able to see that with our algebra tiles. Right? And the thing about these, are, these uh, things have a name, they're called manipulatives. Whenever you have an object that kind of represents math in some way, you call it a manipulative. Right? So the problem with manipulatives is they stop working after a while. Like, there are some things you just can't see. If you can't see. Um, well, here, here's something you can see. You can see x. Okay, this length represents x. How long is it? I don't know. It, it's just a, a, an unknown length. All right. Okay, so that's x. Here is another side that's x. Okay, and just like I can have a rectangle that's uh, two by three, and multiply them together and get the area of six. Does that make sense? 2 times 3 is 6. The area of that rectangle is 6. Well, I can do that with x and x. If I multiply x times x, x squared. That's what x times x is, x squared. We can even do x cubed. Okay, So I'm going to lay this x squared down on a table. Okay, and this the area of it is x squared. So x cubed, I would just multiply it by another x, right? So to do x squared, I, I took a horizontal x and a vertical x. I added another dimension to it. So to get x cubed, I'd have to have another dimension go this way. So there's a horizontal, like a, I don't know what you would call that, an away from you x, and then a vertical x. What shape would you call this shape? Or what, what, what would you call this shape? A cube. So this is x by x by x. This cube is worth x cubed. x times x times x. So the volume of this cube represents x times x times x. x cubed. 
x multiplied by itself three times. Now, the thing that's hard to see would be x to the fourth. With x to the third, we have three dimensions. That's a really common notion for all of us. We have this dimension and this dimension and the vertical dimension. But then a fourth dimension, even if you think of that dimension as time, which maybe some of you have heard of referred to that way, how do you represent that in a picture? That'd be kind of a hard thing to do. Okay. So like I said, these manipulatives will help us see something like x plus 2 times x plus 7. But it would be difficult to represent, say, negative numbers. Uh, or it would be difficult to do something like x squared times x plus 3 or x plus 7 or whatever. So we take what we learned from the algebra tile and we're going to expand it out to all polynomials. Okay, so we're going to do that as well. So we're going to represent multiplication by the algebra tiles. We're going to use it to see what this comes out to be and what any, what we call a binomial times a binomial would be, how that works, okay, and how we would apply that to bigger polynomials with, with x squareds or uh, maybe just like three and four terms long instead of just two terms. Then we're going to use these algebra tiles to, to undo multiplication. Okay. What I mean by undo multiplication is 3 times 5, I'm doing multiplication, I get 15. To undo that multiplication, I would break it back into 3 times 5. Okay. I would find its factors. So we're going to do things, or we're going to do a thing called factoring with these algebra tiles. We're going to factor these things called quadratics, these second degree polynomials. Okay. So to get started, let's take our algebra tiles and let's start with an easy multiplication problem so that we can see what multiplication looks like with algebra tiles. We're going to do um, 4 times 5. All right. So we get all our algebra tiles, we pick our heads up off of our hands or the desks and we, we wriggle our fingers or whatever it takes. Okay. Get involved. All right. So 4 times 5 or five times four, whatever, so let me explain it to you. So the multiplication is gonna happen here, okay, in this workspace, not on the outside. The outside is just helping me like set it up, measure it out. So I've got five this way and four this way. Okay, and inside here what I build is going to be the multiplication of five times four. All right. uh, and it's gonna be represented by a rectangle that is this tall and this wide, okay, and the area of that rectangle will be the product of five and four. So if you took your algebra tiles and you set up five this way and four this way, which it wouldn't be a bad idea to do or to draw out like I have here, if we build a rectangle that is, is this tall, five tall and four wide, let's see what the area would come out to be. I'm sure no one's gonna be surprised by what the area of this rectangle is. What's the area of that rectangle? 20. Okay. So that is the product of 5 and 4. Okay. Um, what would be the area of a, of a rectangle that is 10 by 7? Now we need a rectangle that's this big, this tall, this wide, what would be the area of that rectangle? 70. 70. 10 by 7. If we stacked all the cubes, in, or sorry, the squares in there, we'd have 70 of them. Okay. So whenever we build a rectangle in this workspace here, that's the product of whatever two things we're multiplying. Okay. We're setting up basic with numbers so that we get the idea of what multiplication looks like. So let's do the next level up from there. Fresh workspace. Uh, so now let's do that one. We had 5 times x plus 3, I think, on the other page. So let's do that. Uh, 5. Five times, okay, so this, is, this one side is uh, 5, and this other side is going to be x plus 3. That's x and 3, x plus 3. So we need to perfectly fill in this rectangle, perfectly, that is this tall, this wide, and then 
actually see what is the inside of that look like. And I don't care if you know that this is distribution and you can find the answer. I want you to practice this. Fill in that rectangle, all right? Perfectly fill in all the spaces of that rectangle and see what's there. And if you know to distribute, you can check and make sure that you're right, all right? So take your algae tiles, set it up like this. Or you don't have to set it up, you don't have to put things over here, but you do know that you need a rectangle that is five tall and x plus three wide. Build that, and we'll see what the product is. Okay, so like I said, we you saw with the examples of uh, three by five by four and ten by seven that the multiplication, the product, is what winds up in this gray space that I have up here. Right? These things don't get included. These these parts are only to help us measure it out, right? To tell us what we are multiplying together. And so in the end, this isn't part of the the product and neither is this. Only the stuff that makes the rectangle. Okay? And also, remember I said it, it has to, the stuff we put in here has to exactly perfectly fill in this rectangle. Okay? So if I put uh, four of these here or, or five of these right here to try and fill that space in, is that exactly right? No. One times x is not five, right? What's one times x? It's x. 1 times x is x. So the only thing that will perfectly fill in that part of it is an x and another x, another x, another x, another x. So, so we see that clearly part of this rectangle has to be 5 times x, 5x. And what's going to fit perfectly right there? It's 3 of the 1s. 3 another three, and another three, and four threes, and five threes. Okay? That makes our product perfect. So what do I wind up with? What is this? 5x plus 15. 5x plus 15. Okay? Which, since we already know about distribution, we know about the distributive law, that's what we know we should come up with, right? Distribute the five, you get five times x. Distribute the five to the three, you get five times three is 15. It's exactly how it should be. Okay. Um, so let's do another one. We'll make it a little bit different. Okay, instead of putting five times x plus three, something like that, I'll do x times x plus so much work to do. That means that this side's going to be x, and this side's going to be x plus 2. Plus 2. And remember, we have to build the square so it's exactly perfectly filled in this tall right, and this wide. It's got to perfectly fill that in, and that will represent the product. Quite a few of you are making the same mistake we talked about before. Okay, we need to perfectly, perfectly, not pretty closely, and not really closely, and not super closely, but perfectly fill in this rectangle. It needs to fit the dimensions exactly right. Okay? So most of what I'm seeing is we're just gonna put a bunch of X's here, which makes sense because it's X, right? It's X on this side. Okay, and then we just stack up a bunch of X's until it looks like we have enough. Except for, again, we'll never have enough to be perfectly x on this side because all we're doing, like, what, how big is this side of, of this x triangle or x rectangle? How big is this? One. one, right? We're trying to stack up ones to add up to x, and I purposefully made it so that the x's don't add up to, well, a bunch of ones don't add up to perfectly x. Okay. X, that's what I told you. You have to suspend your disbelief. Okay, x looks like it's five and a little bit more. It's almost six. It's a little bit more than five. It has to represent an unknown value, okay? So, no, 6x's is not going to fill this up. 5x's is not going to fill this up. What, this, this part of the rectangle needs to be x here and x here. So what is x on one side and x on the other side? x squared. That's what we want. Isn't, it, isn't that what x times x is? x times x is x squared. x squared is just a, a way of shortening up. X times X means two X's multiplied together. 
All right. And still some more of you, particularly those of you who are trying to draw this out, which makes it a little bit more difficult because the lengths don't stay consistent. So you make yourself believe you could stack up a bunch of these. Okay. We're going to run into the same problem here. Again, we're trying to add up a bunch of ones on this side to add up to x. It's not going to work because x is this mystery number. We don't know how big it is. It could be five and a half, but it could be 34 and three quarters. We don't know how big it is. We just have to pretend like it could represent any number. So what's going to fit right here and right here? X. An x for this one. That's one by x. And another x, which is also one by x. Okay. So in a picture, in shapes, we see, again, the distribution of x x across x plus 2. If we distribute this x, what's x times x? x squared, that's the definition of x squared, or x times itself. Okay. And then what's x times 2? x times 2, 2x. Two x. Yeah. x times 2, 2 times x, 2x, two 2x's. Two there we are, x squared plus 2x's. So now comes the, the one of the bigger parts of the payoff here. We have to see visually thing, something that, that people struggle with when they don't get to see it visually. Right? And if you see it visually and you think, well, this is really easy, this is really obvious, then great. But if you hadn't seen it visually, I bet you it wouldn't have seemed so easy. Okay, so let's let's look at what I'm talking about. It'll be a really quick picture. So, so far, let me just re recap real quick. We've taken five times what we call binomial, x plus three. We took five times x plus three. All right? Not a completely new idea to us. We just distribute the five. Then x times x plus two. We haven't really dealt with that, okay? But it's easy enough to kind of in infer from our experience of distribution, okay? Well, what about what the, the thing that's out here that we're multiplying isn't just a five or an x or an x squared or an x to the third, just like one thing. What if it is another one of these? another binomial, okay? So let's see what that looks like. Right, so like I said, instead of uh, five times x plus, or x plus four, instead of just one number, what if that was replaced by another thing like this, like x plus two? What's that going to look like? Well, it's easy enough to see if we use our algebra tiles. We make one side x plus 2 and the other side x plus 4. Do that. Make x plus 2 on this side. That's this binomial. It's called a binomial because it's two numbers. Binomial times another binomial. And x and uh, 4. x plus 4. So, after you do this a few times, it's going to get a lot more clear. But we, again, need a perfectly filled in rectangle that's that tall and that wide. Let's see what that comes out to be. So, if I give this to uh, a fairly unexperienced binomial multiplier, it'd be like a person who hasn't multiplied many binomials together, they're probably to come up with this, x squared plus 8. Multiply the x by the x and the 2 by the 4, x squared plus 8. Most common answer, I'm going to say 80% of people will do that, and they'll keep doing that until they get it, okay? And this really helps us get it, right? That's why we're doing it. And then especially when you go to factor them, oh, this is just like a, a miracle, all right? Okay, so first let's start here. What is x by x? What shape is x by x? X squared, that is x times x, x squared. Okay. Now, uh, let's start on top here. Right. Again, if you try to bring over I don't know, some, some ones like this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, it's never going to work out, right? It's not going to be the right dimensions. It's not going to be the product of x times 1. What needs to go right here is, is 1 times x. The only thing that works there is 
x, 1 times x. And then another one. Right? So this part is 2 times x. Right? The 2 gets multiplied by the x length. Okay, let's come over here, same story. It's just the x, we get the x is going vertical here. That's 1 times x. There's 2 times x, we're not done yet. 3 times x. And to get it just right, we get 4 times x. We get the 4 times the x. 4 times x. So, so far we've had x times x, 2 times x, and 4 times x. Now what's going to fill this in? What are the dimensions of this rectangle? Dimension. Yeah, yeah, they're measured in ones. And what's, the, what's this side worth? And what's this side worth? 4. So this side is 2 by 4. And how big is that? 8. 8, right? 2 by 4. 2 times the 4 gives us the 8. Okay? That gives us exactly the right product. Right? So let's write it out. Let's write out what we have in this rectangle first, collecting like terms as we go. So how many x squared do we have? 1x squared. Okay, plus, how many x's do we have? 6 of them. 4 times x plus 2 times x. 6x. Plus, 2 times 4 is 8. Okay. So this picture, this visual should show you that everything from this guy, x plus 2, must be multiplied by everything in this guy, x plus 4. Everything from here has got to get multiplied by everything in there if we're going to get the right product. So it helps us to see that the x got multiplied by the x. There we go, x squared. The 2, uh, well, yeah, the 2 also got multiplied by the x, plus 2x. Okay. Then the x also multiplied the 4, 4x, four and then the 2 also got multiplied by the 4, gave us 8. That's x squared plus 6x plus 8. Here's a picture of it, and then here's what it looks like when we just use symbols to represent this stuff. like I'm going to not build the sides of this thing for you this time. And I'm going to see what you come up with. Okay. So another one going. I want you to do this again for x no x just x plus two times two x plus three. So we have to build the sides your own. Okay. Try to push you out of the nest here. Do the fly. That's my goal. Okay, it's looking better and better. We have x plus 2, so this is x, and plus 2 would be two of these. Then x, and another x, that's 2x, plus 3, so there's 3. Okay, make sense? There's a little bit of confusion there. All right, so let's fill this all in. So we need, this part needs to be x by x. What's that? x squared. And this part also needs to be x by x. Okay. Then we need something here that is x by 1. That would be x. Another one here. Some more over here. And then here we need three x's. One, two, and three. Okay. And how long is this side right here? Two. two. And this, left, this side right here? Three. Three. You see how we get the two way over here? Times the three over here gives us that last piece. 2 times 3 gives us the 6. So from the rectangle we have, what, how many x squareds? 2x squared. 
plus 7x's, and then six. plus 6. Okay, now if we take this and, and we think, like, hey, I know distribution. I know I'm supposed to take this number and distribute it to everything. Okay, well, that's just the case here, it's, but it's, it's both of these numbers need to be distributed to everything here. So everything in the one binomial needs to be distributed to everything over here, okay? Two things need to be distributed across two things, or a total of four things, okay? One, two, three, four, let's see it this way. x times two x, that's two times x times x, that's two times x squared, two x squared. Okay. We can do it whatever order we want, we can do x times three now. Yeah. 3 times x, 3x. So we distributed the x, we took care of that, that's like this. Took the x, distributed it across the whole thing, and we got 2x squared plus 3x. And now we're going to distribute the 2, that's 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 2x is 4x. Plus 2 times 3, 2 times 3 gives us We add the 3 and the 4x together, we get 7x. Okay. So you see how the picture helps us like, remember that x plus 2 times 2x plus 3 is not just 2x squared plus 6. That's what happens a whole heck of a lot is that middle stuff gets forgotten. Okay. What happens a lot of times is people just multiply the x by the 2x. And the two times the three, they forget all about these guys here. But you won't, you, you wouldn't forget that ever if you always did this rectangle. Okay? You can't do that forever. Like I said, it does not continue to work forever. It's not a perfect analogy, but it's a pretty darn good one. That we could use to multiply anything that looks like x plus something times x plus something. Okay. <coughs> so now, um, let's see, what do we want to do next? All right. So let's kind of state a rule, and then we'll apply that rule to things that we just can't really use algebra tiles to represent because the dimensions get crazy. All right. um, if we have, like, x plus a times x plus b, so A and B just represent some other numbers. A could be 2, B could be 3, right? I'm always going to take x times the x. You get x squared. I'm going to take the x times the b. dx. Down to the x. x has been distributed. That's how I want you to translate this into a rule. Just translate it into its distribution. We're just distributing multiple things. I'm going to distribute the x. When I'm done distributing the x, I'm going to distribute the next thing. And when I'm done with that, if there's a third thing, I'm going to distribute that too. And if there's a fourth thing, I'm going to distribute that as well. Okay? So we keep going. x has been distributed across everything in this parentheses. So a is next. ax. Plus whatever a times b is. And then we can add the whatever b and a are. We can add that together, and that's how many x. So now let's do it without the rectangle and see if we remember everything that we're supposed to do. Ready for that? Okay. So x plus 3 times 3x plus 5. All right, so using, really, it's just distribution. It's, it's an extension of the distributive law, distributive property. We just have more things to distribute before we're done distributing. We don't want to distribute things completely. So I just like to start with the first thing to distribute and distribute it, and then move on to the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. Okay? So x times 3x, what's 3 times x times x? 3x squared. x times 5. That's 5 times x, 5x. So x is done, x is distributed. And now we move on to 3. 3 times 3x. What's that? 9x. 9x. And 3 times 5? 
15. All right. So if we were to use our tiles just to confirm, they are very large. We got x plus 3, so just really quickly, that's x plus 3, okay. uh, and then uh, 3x plus 5 on the other side. Okay, so let's look at this first step. x times 3x, that's x times 3x. That's going to be an x squared, an x squared, and another x squared. 3x squared. Okay. Then we had x times 5. Here's x times 5. That's 5x. Then x was done. We distributed the 3. 3 times 3x is 3 times 3x. Okay. So that means 3x is there, and 3x is there and 3x is there, so 9x's. And then here we have a rectangle that is 3 by 5, 15. So altogether we have 3x squared plus 14x plus 15. So the rule here that we want to expand out to the rest of the mathing world is if you have two, two polynomials times each other, then we want to distribute everything from this polynomial into everything in this polynomial. Okay. Uh, so let's see if you can handle this. What if I, what if I have like x plus 2, okay? But then in this one, I have x squared plus x plus three. So if it's just x plus 3, we'd have x to distribute, and 3 to distribute would be done, but we also have an x squared to distribute. So we distribute the x squared, and the x, and the 3. So like I said, seeing this in algebra tiles is impossible. Okay. Or at least so cumbersome that it doesn't help you much to okay. see it. We'd have to have it in three dimensions. Uh, and it would be crazy. Right? So we'll just stay with the, the rule, which is distribute everything to everything else. So to make sure this is done correctly, we just need to make sure that everything is distributed to everything else. Just make sure you, you pair everything possible up, multiply it together, and when you're done, collect like terms. Right? So, Let's start with the x squared. Take it nice and slow here. What's x squared times x? Is it x cubed? Is it x times x times x? Three x's multiplied together? Yes, it is. OK, x cubed. x squared times 2. 2 times x squared. That was pretty natural. x squared has been distributed. It's done. Its job is over. Move on to another one. Color coding helps. Move on to x. x times x. That's x squared. That's the very definition of x squared is two x's multiplied together. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. All right. x has been distributed to the x and the 2. Its job is over now. And now we'll get another color. Maybe a different shape, even. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 2 is 6. Take a look over your work. Does it, does it match up? I bet it probably does. So x cubed, that's the only x cubed. There's no other like terms to collect. It's just x cubed. 
two x squared plus x squared, that's three x squared, not, uh, not two x to the fourth, or three x to the fourth, or anything like that we have. Remember, two x squareds plus another x squared is three x squareds. If you saw that in algebra tiles, you'd have three x squareds, and that's what it would be, three x squared. Plus five of the x's plus six. There you go, there's a the product of a trinomial, that's the three numbers over there, and the binomial, the one that's on the right. Tri three, trinomial, binomial, multiply a trinomial by a binomial, and that's an optimal. How do you guys do, you wanna practice one more? One more practice? Okay, let's do one more practice. Um, now, that, now that you've done it once, if, I was just point something out here. If you do three times five, is it different from five times three? Nope. That's five, five times three is still 15. Multiplication of numbers, of real numbers, which all like these x's represent real numbers. So multiplication of real numbers is what's called commutative. We can switch the order, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's, since these represent numbers, that must also be true in this case. So if you want to try it, you can. But to multiply these two together, if you think it's a little easier to do this, to think about it, you only have to distribute two things instead of distributing three things. You just have to distribute it across the three things over here. So whichever way you multiply, whichever order you go in, it doesn't matter. Okay. So if you want to switch this order around, feel free. Um, let's do 2x squared plus 5x minus seven, this is especially something that would be difficult to represent with the algebra tiles, negative numbers. How do we do that? Well, it would take more imagination than I think is worth it. Times, um, let's call it two x minus four. Right, so, some more advice. Keep track of those negatives when you have a positive times a negative, a negative times a negative, remember what those are supposed to be. Don't get confused, okay? The, the exponents only increase if I'm multiplying x's times x's, okay? Not adding. So, all right. Um, let's just see what most people did. Who multiplied it in this order? Raise your hand if you multiplied it in this order. Okay, raise your hand if you flipped it and multiplied it that way. This first? Yeah. Anybody else? You did that? Okay, well, that's only three of you. So let's go with the majority. Did it this way. Uh, did it this way. But we'll come out with the exact same thing, okay? I wouldn't tell you to switch the order if it changed your answer. That would be silly. All right, so a little bit faster this time. Two times two is four, all right? That's the two times the two. The x squared times the x, so that's x times x times another x is x to the third. Then 2x squared times negative 4. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 times x squared. And then 5x, we'll distribute the 5x. 5x times 2x, 5 times 2 is 10, it's positive. x times x is x squared. 5x times negative 4, okay, so now we have positive 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. This doesn't have any x's, this is just one x that we're multiplying here. 20x, run out of room, move it over, pick it up. All right. So 5x has been distributed completely. Good. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14 times an x. And then we just have a number times another number, so we should get a number. Uh, 7 times negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. Put it all together. 4x cubed, okay, plus 2x squared minus 34x plus 28. Okay. How does that go? Good? Great. So you're ready to, or should be able to, I, you know, I have the basis for multiplying. 
I mean, we, we should be able to multiply a trinomial by another trinomial if you wanted to. We just to make sure to distribute the first thing through all three things, and distribute this three through to all three things, and this thing through all three things. You should be able to multiply five terms times seven terms, right? Not that we're going to do that. We should be able to, as long as you take everything in the one parentheses and multiply by everything in the next parentheses, you're good to go. And to collect like terms. The key here is being very careful and very certain of every step that you take. Okay, because if you fly through the steps and one of those steps is incorrect, and then it, you know you check your answer and it's wrong, now where'd you make a mistake? I don't know, it could have been anywhere. Okay, so be careful when you're multiplying. Make sure that uh, x squared times x comes out to be x to the third. Okay, uh, and x times x comes out to be x squared, not just x. Just be methodical about that. Careful, and then collect like terms. Slowly, carefully, make sure you get all of them. Right? Get all of the terms collected. <coughs> you don't miss any. Sometimes a, like a common mistake would be, I'm going too fast and, and I don't see this, so I just kind of skip over it and I get just 10x squared. And I forgot to subtract the 8x squared to find those like terms. So watch out for that kind of thing. Okay. So here's, here's the cool thing. This is what the algebra tiles really makes uh, this next part a lot easier, okay, because we can see it. Uh, people do struggle with this, this distributing thing, the thing we're doing now, multiplying together, but they, they catch on all right, most of the time. But when it comes to going the other way, okay, by going the other way, let me show you what I mean. Uh, if I gave you 3x squared plus 14x plus 15, could you figure out somehow that it came from these two being multiplied together. Maybe not. Okay, that's that's a much trickier proposition, right? You could multiply 476 times 355, right? You can multiply those together. But if I gave you that number, could you figure out that those two numbers were the ones that multiplied together to make that number? That's trickier. All right. So we're going to what's called factor a quadratic. So the only thing that we're going to factor is, is something like this, that is the highest power is x squared. So we're not going to do anything like this where we have an x cubed in there, at least we're not going to do that yet. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Once you have your al algebra tiles, or if you're really good at drawing the algebra tiles, that's good. Just don't make sure your dimensions are messed up. All right? I'll give you an easy one to start with. Okay? Let's start with x squared plus... Um, Nine x <coughs> plus fourteen. You're trying to do, and I know it seems not a very easy thing to do, but we got to start somewhere. We're going to start here. Just tell me what did the two parentheses look like before I distributed them together to get this? All right. So that's what I want you to do. Here's the key. Use your algebra tiles. First, take algebra tiles that are x squared plus 9x. Do you have 9x's? I think you do. Or if you don't, you can, you can draw this out. Okay. Take these pieces and fit them back into a rectangle. And then the dimensions of the rectangle will be these two parentheses. Is it too much to handle? Just right off the bat, should we just should I show you what I'm talking about? If you think you can try it. Okay. All right, give it a shot. Take those pieces, try and rearrange them into a rectangle. It's a perfect rectangle. And it will work. There is a perfect rectangle out there that works. In fact, there's only one rectangle that has, whether it's like this or it's tall or wide, it's going to have the same dimensions. One way for this to work. Okay, so you see what I was just um, proposing. Uh, maybe we'll we'll split up four x's here and five x's here. That's that's the nine x's. Um, and then see, will the fourteen fit in there? Well, no. How many do we need to go in there? I need twenty. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. So maybe uh, 
Well, I shouldn't take one from here and put it up there, right? Because I would just make the five there and the four here. That would be the same thing. Maybe I'll take this guy here. I've got it. It's harder to do up here. I'm going to flip it around. Put it there. Okay. So I still have nine x's and I, and I have uh, x squared. Okay. And let me, let me write over here in symbols what I've, what I've just tried. Here's what I've tried. Uh, just a second ago, I tried x plus uh, 5 on this side times x plus 4. Well, that doesn't work because that comes out to be 20. I need to come out to be 14, so that's no good. Okay, so now I've got x plus 3. That's x plus 3 right here. And this side, what's this side? x plus 6. Does that work out? No, how many go right here? 18. Okay, that's not what I want. I want it to come out to be 18. That's not going to work. All right, let's try a different one. Let's try moving this guy down here too. Right there. Okay, now what do we have? I have x plus 2 times x plus 7. And how many squares would go here? 14, perfect. That's exactly what I needed, right? So if I make the rectangle be x plus 2 by x plus 7, when I multiply it out, it'll come out to be x squared plus 9x plus 14. Right? That's pretty cool. Like if, if you were able to build that rectangle and come up with these two binomials, it's something that eludes many students for a long, long time. Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to write your homework. As I do that, I want you to work on this next one with your algebra tiles again. Uh, x squared plus um, 10x plus 7. It won't care. <laughs> <laughs>